Hello, and welcome to Candidates Upfront, a public interest election program of Berks Community Television and the League of Women Voters of Berks County. Our November 7th general election is coming up. Citizens who are 18 or older will vote for judges, school directors, and township, borough, and city officials. The deadline to register to vote is October 23rd. To check your voting status, go to vote.pa.gov. That's vote.pa.gov. You can register, change your party, locate your polling place, or apply for an absentee or mail-in ballot. And the deadline to apply for those is October 31st. If you are looking for information on statewide, school, or township races, or borough officials, please use the League's online voters guide, vote411.org. That's vote411.org. And for information on countywide and Reading candidates, please stay tuned. The League interviewed candidates in contested races, those who wanted to be interviewed. And for each race, the candidates got the same basic questions and had the same amount of time to answer them. For the League, I'm Judith Cranus, and let's begin. Hello, I'm Kay Herring, a member of the League of Women Voters of Berks County. Thanks for joining us. The featured office today is Reading City Council President. The president of City Council is elected citywide and must be a resident of the city. The president presides at council meetings and performs those duties needed to organize council functions. He or she has the same voting powers as the other six district council members. The president interacts with the mayor and other governmental entities and represents the voice of council. The position is part-time, the term is four years, and the current annual salary is $5,500. There are three candidates, Democrat Donna Reed, Republican Evelyn W. Morrison, and Christian Party Melvin Padilla Santos. Each candidate's views are their own and not those of the League or BCTV. Today our candidate is Evelyn W. Morrison. Welcome, Evelyn. Please tell our viewers um, about yourself and why you are running. Okay, I'll be glad to do that. I am a lifelong resident of the city of Reading. My home ground was the south side, South 11th Street. So I was raised into a Polish, Italian, Slovak, working class community where people looked out for each other, they looked out for their children. I ate galumpkis, I ate uh, ziti, I ate uh, goulash. Um, my, my bringing, upbringing was very, very multicultural. And I appreciate my Irish roots in the sense that my mother and father were very, very fair people. And they gave us a sense of home and family church, community, and education. So we are coming to a point where that multicultural uh, beginning from my father and mother as a uh, religious Christian family now works for me well when we're dealing with a multicultural, bilingual, intergenerational, universal community. And I believe that I have the skills that I can add to the collaboration to make this city a more vibrant and, and interactive city for all the um, citizens. Thank you, Kay. Well, thank you. And maybe the second question, you can expound on your personal qualities um, that you feel that you have that would help you to be an effective council president. I know my city very well, Kay. Everything that ever took place here, I've either been on the steering committee, the focus group, whatever the organization, the focus, the uh, st uh, community study. I have a background. First of all, my education is in the Reading Public uh, School District. And I also am one of the graduates of Reading Area Community College, having to advocate to have the community college in our uh, community. 
Also, I am a two-time graduate at Alvernia University, one in criminal justice systems, that's my administration, that's my uh, bachelor's degree, and my master's degree is in uh, MBA, uh, master's in business administration, with a focus on economic uh, development of nonprofits. I've traveled around the world, Africa, Mexico, Cuba, um, Haiti, Puerto Rico, just so that I could be beneficial in dealing with cultures and solving problems. So my worldview is quite broad and it's not limited to just being a Pennsylvania Dutch person. Okay, yes, I am, I'm a Pennsylvania Dutch person. So the important thing is that my education has prepared me. My spiritual and religious education has brought me to a point that I am a moral and ethical leader. So I don't compromise that because I serve a bigger boss than most uh, of us do. Amen. Okay. okay. Do you think Penn Street is healthy and successful? And if not, what would you change? Now you're talking to a person <laughs> who saw Penn Street by the thousands of people dressed sharp walking down the street when Penn Street was alive and well with all kinds of stores and investments. To see it go through a transition in the 80s with the malls, the suburban malls, it killed us. It really took the heart out of our city. And now we're still struggling, almost limping, to get back that vibrancy. But I do believe, as a visionary, that we can have a vibrant Penn Street. And there's so many factions working towards that goal. But you cannot eliminate any sector of the community. Everybody must be a participant in the economic development, the political development, as well as the social development of our uh, great street, Penn Street. Okay. What do you see as the biggest issues that will face Reading in the next four years? It's always taxes, because people don't mind paying taxes if they're getting their, uh, you know, as they say, bang for the, for the dollar. They don't mind investing in their city when they see the city that's not corruptible, that's uh, working in behalf of the citizens, that's providing services that are professional, that are necessary, and they're not gouging their eyes out. Okay, when I say gouging the eyes out, that's a term my mom used to use in terms of um, just excessive fees. So we have to be able to um, uh, maximize maximize our services as we begin to minimize. Because we just came out of Act 47. A bankrupt city is not a city that is free to develop itself. It's limited. So we have to make sure, one, we don't go back into Act 47. And with the advent of the ARP money, the ARP money is making people believe that we have uh, extended money bags, but we don't. That money's going to be uh, audited, and I trust nobody gets in trouble behind the ARP money. So let's work together. Let's use our public dollars for the people, by the people, and of the people. Thank you, May. Some in our community say Reading has traffic problems and parking problems. How would you mitigate those concerns or change the situation? Well, we're in the course of studying that transportation issue. I belong to a group that is looking at it county, it's a federal, state, county, and local participants. And there are challenges, there really is. And we need to reestablish a public transportation in addition to what is there now. BARDA is good. They have maintained that program really well. But now we need those ancillary services, uh, whether it's bus, whether it's com commuter. I always supported the train because as a teenager, we could come and go to Philadelphia, to Pottstown, to Norristown, and not have a problem of safety or the luxury of getting to a place where you want to go. So I believe that we really need to stay focused on the strategy of our transportation needs. And especially for those who are persons with disabilities, senior citizens, and our young children that are safe, that they need to be safe in their coming and going. 
Um, so you, this may sort of be a repeat of what you were just saying, but the question is, what are the most important concerns of the people of the city? The first concern is safety and welfare. You know, we've had uh, dealt with a number of issues with violence and um, gun use in our, um, illegal gun use in our community. But that's not everything. We have an issue of drugs. We have issues of crime. But street crime has no comparison to white collar crime. When we talk about the millions of dollars that are mismanaged, mis mismanaged by the public entities, we have to be real careful what we focus on. The community violence has, it's an aftermath of lack of education, training, and jobs. We have so many programs that are job development, but yet when we look at the statistics of who's being benefited, we come up in the gray areas. We have to do a better job making sure we deliver the services and measure the accomplishments of every individual that's involved with every workforce development program and not abuse the system that pays for education and training. Well, how do you plan to involve residents in the decision-making process? As a community advocate, when a person has a concern, that's when they're already involved. So they need the training and the support to get through their issue. And usually when you introduce someone to the law, the policy and the procedure that governs their issue, now they have become empowered. We forgot that empowerment starts with one person. Each one teach one, and each one has to reach one. So as a chief advocate, I enjoy revealing what the laws say versus what the practices are, and then how we look at those things as a mediator not an aggressor or an, uh, an adversary, but as a meteor to move through the process and get a resolution. That's important. Resolutions and mediation is key on every level. When council is approving a mayoral appointment, what criteria will you consider? Following the Home Rule Charter, it's established in our governing document what the roles and responsibilities have to be for each level of government. We can't overstep our role. We can't subject any other government official to our needs or our wants or our agendas. We have to be able to stay aligned with our governing documents and exact them without personalities, without conflict, and without personal agendas. And what we've been witnessing is that where, where we should have a strong mayor, we have a mayor that's being manipulated uh, in a way that should not be done. So as president of city council, I guarantee that we're going to follow our charter and that we're going to have a true consensus. And the public has to be a participant. This is a government for the people, of the people, and by the people. Thank you. Um, another specific issue um, of the city is blighted properties. Oh, yes. Some say they should be fixed, redeveloped, or repurposed. Um, how would you address that issue? It's historical. The Secretary of Community Development and Economic Development he told me one time, we've sent billions of dollars to the city of Reading, and we have nothing to show for it. Reading has an inventory of houses that were built between 19, before 1978. So a lot of them have lead, they have code issues. When a person purchases a home, they should have, or an investment property, they should have the support of the city through the public money of community and economic development to begin to improve that property to create a tax base. You cannot do that if city council has voted to allow millions and millions of dollars to be written off of the community 108 dollars. 108 is a loan that the business can have, they pay it back, 
and it revolves to the next person who applies. So the payments create the uh, revenue for others to take a loan. When you sign off and write off those millions and millions of dollars, those payments never come. That's been a big problem in terms of our public distribution of public funds. So the blighted properties have support and the owners should have support with the city, but there has to be education and training. Budget decisions are difficult. Sometimes the services that people enjoy, like parks and libraries, are underfunded. Mm -hmm. So things that people need, like police and street repair, can be properly funded. How will you prioritize spending when you vote on the budget? The budget is a massive in undertaking. Every department has to be represented. The administration processes and services have to be represented. We cannot, and what I've noticed in the last couple budgets, is our consulting services are going into the hundreds of thousands of dollars. The, the experts are in the room. The, the financial gurus are here. We don't need to have a large consulting base of people coming in here to tell us what we need to do. Yes, we need to stay up with the trends, the investments, and we need to look at the money markets. However, when we're dealing with local money, the important thing is that we manage it correctly, that we document it correctly, and we don't let it become the agenda of someone else. We have to collectively take responsibility of our public money. So the oversight uh, is real important, and it should be an internal uh, process. I'm going to combine two questions here, although they're related, just okay. so that we make sure that we have enough time. Sure. What are your ideas to make Reading an attractive place for families and then also for businesses? First of all, I take that gate down from the pagoda. Our landmark is a very important um, uh, landmark. And it has always been a tourist, but we've never really developed it like we should have. Now there's repairs to be done. Now the building, it looks like $3 million to uh, handle the repairs and things like that. Shutting it down does not make our city work. But one thing I've learned about the pagoda, we have a bell that sits in there that was stolen from the Japanese um, temple. 48 monks created that bell, and it's a spiritual artifact. I don't know how we got it to be up on the mountain, but I think it has something to do with what's happening on the mountain if you believe in spiritual karma. So the important thing is we need to look at our landmarks, and we need to create activities and education. You cannot educate a people if you hide its history. Now, I just found out that Reading Berks County was a plantation. I was surprised. Both the canal operations and also the raw pig iron foundries were the northern industrial slavery. Well, thank you for Albright College, uh, one of the professors, for doing that work, because it made me realize now what happens to this freedom. The history of Reading has been hidden because the great-grandchildren of those people who were the plantation owners, they're embarrassed to know that their wealth comes from slavery. We have to heal. Forgiveness is for everybody. So we have to bring the history back so that we can create a sense of tourism from within. Our first client should be the citizens of Reading to really enjoy the true history of Reading and not a biased history, but a true history. So as you can see, we have enough of beautiful landmarks that we can begin to market. Our real estate is unusual, unlike no other, but yet we play it down. So we need to do more in our visual and infrastructures. So we have a couple minutes left, and okay. I, I want you to be able to give a closing statement and, and wrap up, but I want to also address this question, which is very important. Um, Reading most of the time is a safe place to work and yes. visit, um, but we do have violence related to drugs and gangs. Um, what can the city do to thwart the, the violence? The city has to become the father of the city. We have to take on parenting 
as a collective. You know, you heard the adage that it takes a village to raise the children. Well, it really does. And our founding fathers, they believed in family, the strength of family, the strength of a government that was of the people, for the people, by the people. But over the years, it's become slanted. But right now, we have to get back to reinforcing the family, reinforcing small businesses that are ma and pa generated, and to reinforce the sense of a moral education. Now, it's not making a judgment what religion you should be a part of, no. We're saying ethical and moral leadership begins at the home. So we need to really support our families, and especially our single mothers, our single fathers, and begin to look at, now how does government get involved with families? Well, we make sure that everything we do is family oriented and no one's um, eliminated. So let's start with the family, the family of the city of Reading. Isn't that beautiful? Thank you, Evelyn W. Morrison, for sharing your views with us. Viewers, please remember there are two other candidates for city council president, Donna Reed, Democrat, and Melvin Padilla Santos from the Christian Party. You will find candidates up front interviews on BCTV and its website and the YouTube page. For more information on candidates, you can go to the league's online voters guide, vote411.org. Thank you for watching Candidates Up Front. I'm Kay Herring. Have a good day.